There's no right or wrong to this because it all depends on what other choices you've made. I think they did something that they haven't done before, really. Oh, I think you should put that on. It was a nice learning activity with equipment that we don't have in the school and we probably wouldn't ever have access to it. Well, we didn't use a lot of money and ours didn't work very well. I think we could all hear the drummer there, couldn't we? <laughs> one day, one student will walk out of the classroom and 20 years later will go, I still remember doing that activity. My name is Emma Shanks, I'm a noise and vibration research scientist and I work at the Health and Safety Laboratory in Buxton, Derbyshire. I like being an ambassador because I can give something back to the school system that perhaps the school system doesn't provide or is unable to provide due to its various restrictions. Um, I benefited from having fantastic physics and maths teachers at school. Uh, and I'd like to think that I can have an imprint on maybe just one child in the same way they imprinted on me. My very, very first STEM activity um, was a baptism of fire. Um, I got involved with the Institute of Physics Lab in a Lorry, which is three experiments in the back of a 38-tonne articulated truck. Um, I was one of the volunteers running one of the three experiments. Um, it was a resonating wine glass because I was the acoustics person that happened to be there and we had 120 students through in one morning. I was apprehensive. I was terrified when I saw the lorry. I was also quite excited because this was the first activity I was going to deliver. Everything was happening so fast that it was literally, this is what you're going to do, in at the deep end, go. and it's like, Oh, OK, and, and you just do it. You're an adult, you know more than the, the students know that are coming in. You're going to be OK. But that doesn't stop it being one of the most frightening experiences of my life. This particular activity is one that is available to me through my professional body, through the Institute of Acoustics, and has very bespoke kit that was specially made for the job. Um, and before I go out to a particular school, I always like to check that each of the kits has got everything in it that it's supposed to have in it. Um, particularly important when you've got a shared pool of kits, which I have in this case. Um, so the, the, the activity kits could be anywhere in the country at any one time, and I request a certain number of them from the Institute of Acoustics. They get delivered to my workplace, and it's then up to me to make sure that they're fit and ready for purpose um, before going out to the school. Instead of finding out on the day that you're missing a couple of MP3 players, it does not look good. Today I'm feeling quite confident. Um, I've been doing this for about three years now and that confidence has built up over that time. I'm very familiar with my activity. The process that's led to me doing this activity today involves me being part of a mailing list for the STEM contract holder in Derbyshire. Um, I receive an email um, relatively regularly, probably once a week or so, which has a list of requests from different schools around the area who are looking for STEM ambassadors in particular topic areas to come in and help deliver part of the school curriculum. Like any activity, you never know what's going to happen when, when the students enter the classroom. So it, it could be a complete disaster um, and on the other hand it could be a great success and we'll only know that the moment the students walk in. Can everybody hear this? Now, you watch. I'm going to still keep turning that wheel, OK? I'm not going to stop turning the wheel. That's because sound can travel through air, but it can also travel through things. Today I'm going to deliver an activity called Your Band, which is an acoustics activity designed to get the students involved in building and designing a rehearsal space, something that hopefully they can relate to. They're usually all into music. These boxes look very innocuous, but they actually contain all the equipment you need to make a rehearsal room. Granted, it's a small rehearsal room. The backstory is that they have a band, which is the student group they're working in, and they have to have a band name. That's item number one, very important and they then have a series of materials that they can use so to build their soundproof room. Go, talk. <laughs> it could be reflective materials such as steel or plywood or hardboard 
or they may have some plastic type materials like coroflute which is corrugated plastic, some rigid foam or some very soft squidgy foam which is a sound absorber. I'm just going to tell you about these spacer bars all right. These are spacer bars, these are free of charge, okay? You've got loads in the, on, on the floor, right? You can also use them to build what's called a composite structure. So if I want One of the challenging things about going into a classroom is that you may have students who have different learning capabilities and different um, perhaps behavioural requirements. And as somebody who hasn't been in school for a long time and who has no contact with the school system at all, um, I wasn't particularly aware of this on one occasion and I had a series of activities running back to back for four lots one after the other four hours running and what a the school hadn't told me and b I hadn't asked about was that um, the ability levels of these groups it hadn't even crossed my mind that the student year group was going to be split up in that manner into their learning ability group if there's something you think could be a potential problem for you you ask the question in such a way that it's not a problem for the school. You make sure it's, it's something that I, if for me, it's something I need to ask. I need to make sure that's going to be suitable for them. OK, there's another idea. And the air gap, careful, the air gap in the middle can absorb sound almost as well as with a bit of foam like that. I thought Emma had a super relationship with the students. Um, she integrated well with them when she was going around and speaking to them. I think she made the objective very clear and what the outcomes of it wanted to be. And I thought overall it was really, really positive. This is a sound level meter and we're going to set your bands going and we're going to measure how much noise is coming out of your rehearsal room and see who has managed to build the best rehearsal room for their band. The Your Band activity um, was primarily designed for secondary school children. Um, so from the ages of between 11 and 14 um, and designed to influence or potentially influence their GCSE choices. Are you ready? Since I've been carrying out this activity, I've experimented with taking that to younger age groups to try and catch them even earlier. And so far I've actually gone down to a year two group. Um, I definitely wouldn't go any younger than that though. Um, and with this particular activity, it's my topic area, so I'm comfortable delivering that to a younger audience and also to an older, old, older audience as well. So, it, with great pleasure, I'm able to announce that the Bellas managed 61 dB, which for the spend is a very good result. Okay. So at the end of the activity, we end up with a results table which has all the band names listed. Um, all their budgets listed so we can see how much they've spent um, and if they've overspent they will get penalised a number of decibels from their uh, final result of measuring the sound that's coming out of their rehearsal rooms and then finally we have the, the actual results from their rehearsal rooms and how many decibels are actually coming out of the, uh, out of the boxes. And then we've got the Butter Boys and DJ Pandas hovering around the, the mid to high 60s which is still not bad, okay, it's still a pretty good result. I think having a STEM ambassador in the school um, allows students to understand that science isn't just about what we do in the classroom and the wider content and it brings a vocational element into it which is teachers, um, especially with the constraints of the curriculum that we have, it does bring that extra element to it to make it real for them. So before they would never have thought about perhaps soundproofing a room and the impact that that has on abandoned rehearsals, so some of them will take that away with them um, as a long term memory I guess. Well we had to try and make a rehearsal room out of different materials and the one with the sound staying in the, in the room wins at the end. I know that you don't use like metal or wood or anything that the sound could reflect back into the room. I'd make the walls thick so that there was more stuff to stop the, the sound waves hitting so that it would be a quieter noise from outside the room. It was a bit different, uh, but I enjoyed it the same, and yeah, it was nice to have a change. <laughs> I think um, STEMnet provides uh, a way into how science subjects or STEM subjects can be used in the real world, and it just gives the students that link between what they're doing in the classroom and how that can be applied outside of the classroom, when they, particularly if they come to do their uh, exam choices, for example, or subject choices. Um, doing a lesson like this might just influence them in some way and push them off in a direction they perhaps haven't otherwise considered.